Hey everyone, welcome back. It's a Thursday and I wanted to take this chance over a cup of coffee to talk with you guys about management styles and shop structures from what I've experienced so far throughout my career. And this is something that's going to be very important if you're looking for a job someplace or if you're trying to think of a better way to organize your shop. I'll tell you right now, um, I work in a very large facility that has multiple buildings spread out over a region, an entire campus. And the problem is, is when I arrived here on scene, they wanted to separate out according to specialty. And that was going to be your team. So you have imaging team, you have like your general medical team, um, your patient monitoring team, and then you have your uh, surgical team. And you would think it's okay, except we have we have operating rooms in multiple buildings on different floors. We have ICUs in multiple buildings in different floors. We have laboratories in multiple buildings in different floors. And uh, the problem is, is you have a team that does patient monitoring. Let's say you have two or three people doing patient monitoring, but you have multiple buildings and multiple floors. Well, yes, they've worked themselves into a little niche and they're going to be stretched very thin because they're going between multiple buildings and multiple floors and they're going to be running their butts off. Well, let's say surgical team. We had to add more members of the surgical team because we have, I don't know, four operating rooms, maybe more if you include small procedures and labor and delivery. And we were stretched very thin because you have specialties and you only have so many members of that specialty and they're, you know, running between buildings and floors. And the, the worst part is, is you have no real accountability because, you know, you got only so many people doing the specialty. And the real problem is, is that you work yourself into a niche and you can't rely on other people for help. Okay, and what I'm getting at is the organizational structure uh, traditionally has been to separate according to specialty. It's just the way it is. And in most hospitals I've been to, which is my share of hospitals, um, that's how they want to do it. And in small facilities, it doesn't really matter. But when you get to these larger facilities, it, it does matter when you stretch people thin like that and you work people into specialties and you don't try and round out their uh, breadth of experience as a technician. I know you guys can hear the defibs all going nuts because uh, people didn't plug in defibs, but anyway. Mm. Guys, I gotta stop right there. I don't know if you guys have ever experienced this uh, Vietnamese coffee. You mix the powder in a, in a drink. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Anyway, back to what I was saying. The best way that I've found to create better technicians and um, improve workflow is to specialize in nothing. In other words, you create teams based on your tower. So if this tower has, you know, two or three ICUs, it's got a small procedure room, maybe labor and delivery, and you have some laboratories in there, well, guess what? You assign two or three people to do that whole tower. You do everything in there, and you're responsible for doing rounds in that tower, and you get to know your customers because you're not stretched across the entire campus. You're in one building. You're in one spot. And, uh, you know, that that worked for the hospital that I was just at. I suggested it before I left at the hospital next door. And uh, I've talked to a couple technicians since they've implemented that system where they create a team based on your tower. And you do everything in the tower. If it's a laboratory, if it's an operating room, whatever. But it creates a more rounded technician. It does it because you get used to patient monitoring. You get used to ICUs. You get used to laboratories. You get used to operating room surgical. And you just get better technicians. Plus, people get used to doing everything in that tower. Well, guess what? If they have to migrate to another tower to assist, they can do everything in that tower too because they're already a well-rounded technician. So, um, 
as far as organizational structure goes, usually people want to migrate um, and do only their specialty, you know, and it's just not a good way to do work anymore. I mean, maybe that was good 20 years ago, but guys, we have to change with the times and we have to be more mobile and we have to be more flexible as technicians. So that's just what I've experienced. And I'm really hoping at this facility, they implement um, a more uh, tower-based team structure. So normally you have your laboratories, you have operating rooms, you have uh, patient monitoring, you have maybe projects if you're a big facility, you'll have imaging, and, and maybe maybe one or two other teams, but by separating out by specialty, you get tunnel vision as a technician and as a manager, which brings me to my next thing. <sighs> Management styles. Guys, I'll tell you right now that uh, I have seen a drastic difference, a very, very vast difference in how managers manage biomed teams. And it, it's not an age-based theory, you know, like uh, baby boomers want to do it this way, and young guys want to do it this way. No, it's more so about skill set as a manager and if they want to include themselves with the technicians. That's a big one, guys. A lot of managers think that all that they're going to do is push paper and attend meetings and lay down the law. That's a horrible way to manage, guys. That is a horrible way to manage. I'll tell you right now that um, if you're a manager and you want your guys to come in this weekend and work overtime because like some of the numbers aren't right or because you have to do an inventory or something, that manager... I highly suggest that he also comes in on the weekend and he's there with his guys. And if he can't for any whatever reason and they complete whatever outrageous task it is that they have to do, give them a thank you, a public thank you. Like, hey guys, good job. Good on you, man. Buy breakfast or lunch for him, you know. But, uh, you know, that's maybe that's the military thing, you know. I, I came up as a biomed in the military and because of that, like, if if your troops were there working, you were going to be there too. It's a promise. And I've, I've kind of carried that up until this very day, that if I have a team and I say, hey, somebody needs to come in this weekend and do time changes, well, guess what, guys? I'm going to be there too. I have been to every single time change for years. For well over a decade, almost two decades, I've been to every single one, even as a team leader, and even when people told me I didn't need to be, it's because it's leading by example, but more so, you know, you are being there for your people. You know, it encourages teamwork to be there. You know, we're all in this together. It's that whole ethos. And we've all seen that meme about, like, boss versus leader. And I highly encourage you guys, if you are going to be in charge of a biomed shop, be a leader. And if you are going to direct people to do something, you do it too. If you need somebody to come in during a hurricane or during a freezing cold, you are going to be there too. Okay? It's I, I've seen managers that are there and they're excellent. They're there with coffee in the morning, you know, ready to go with a, a morning meeting. Um, to brief everybody on what their mission is going to be. And then I've seen the other leaders that don't even make a phone call during, uh, during a hurricane. Nothing. Nothing. No communication. No nothing. I've seen, I've seen stuff that have made me not want to be a biomed anymore. Okay? Guys, I, I've seen some really bad stuff. But I have seen some excellent stuff come from... Um, some of my teammates and some of um, leadership that I've had at other hospitals, like the, the one that I worked at before this, I have seen some excellent examples of leadership and uh, prime examples for team leaders and prime examples for directors, which is going to bring me to the last thing, um, structure of a biomed shop and how it normally is for you guys. So if you didn't know, 
Normally you have your Biomed 1, 2, and 3. When you get to Biomed 3, depending on the size of your shop, your Biomed 3 might or probably will be running some aspect of the Biomed Equipment Program. Like, let's say you have um, inventory on parts. Let's say you have the Biomed on-call schedule. Let's say you have um, safety, like your eyewash station you have to check, and you have your check for PPE and lockout tagout system, your safety officer. That is going to be another Biomed 3 uh, position, unless you have team leaders. So you have Biomed 1, 2, and 3, and then team leader often. And uh, your Biomed team leader is going to do other management roles, like they're going to have a huddle in the morning and you're going to talk about what the day's goals are or why you're not meeting your goals or what the schedule is going to be like for whoever has to come in this weekend. That's what the team leader is going to be doing. And on top of that, you're going to have your directors. So you got your team leader and then you're going to have a biomed manager who's sometimes a director and then you're going to have your real director. Okay. In some place in the middle of all that, you're going to have a biomedical engineer, which is often your director, okay? So you think of uh, a biomedical or clinical engineer as usually some sort of management, right? And, you know, we as senior level techs, we are just going to be managers without any uh, real power. So that's what I have for you guys. Thanks for watching and have a good day, guys.